Today on BRS TV 52 FAQ, are your nitrates and phosphates balanced? Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of Beers TV 52 FAQ, where each week we answer some of your most common reefing related questions. This week we're answering Anthony Candler's question, how do I have high nitrates but low phosphate? This of the reverse is a fairly common question that does impact a relatively small amount of reefers, and there are a variety of causes. We're going to give a brief overview of why this even matters, and then talk about the four most common causes foods or nitrogen source, testing, unbalanced export method, and potentially something unexpected like dosing Kelkwasser. The nitrate and phosphate levels and ratio to each other is important to most reefers because they want to keep both fairly low to fight algae, promote calcification, and in some cases encourage specific desirable colorations. How low for each is not only just up to some debate, but also up to your particular reefing style and what is in the tank. However, not many people want one sky high and the other near zero. In fact, there's something called the red field ratio, which to some degree describes the ideal ratio of nitrogen to phosphorus in the tank of 16 to 1, because it's the atomic ratio of nitrogen to phosphate found in the ocean's phytoplankton. In fact, almost all of the world's plankton has that ratio, and as a result, so does much of the food chain that relies on that plankton as a primary food source, as well as the organisms found deeper within that food chain. In turn, when these organisms die, they break down into nitrogen and phosphorus, and why the ocean's organic and inorganic nitrogen to phosphorus levels are roughly 16 to 1. That said, this is an average and life always seems to find a way and there are isolated instances where nitrogen or phosphorus is limited and that ratio can be as low as 6 to 1 or as high as 60 to 1. So how does that apply to a reef tank? Well, that 16 to 1 goal certainly is fun to try and chase and there absolutely are reefers who strongly advocate that being under or over that ratio causes a wide variety of undesirable bacterial or algae blooms or can even stunt coral growth. That said, it's really beyond the skill level of almost every reefer to even attempt to effectively really maintain the ideal red fill ratio, which also includes carbon of 106 carbon to 16 nitrogen to 1 phosphorus. If you're actively attempting this and doing it effectively, you likely know that you're not just a 1% reefer, but likely one in a thousand. However, even if you get the ratio right, your levels are still very different from the ocean because even ultra low levels in the aquarium of a few parts per million nitrate or a few parts per billion phosphate are like hundreds to thousands of times higher than they are in the ocean. But that said, even if you don't want to chase that perfect ratio, there is a reason I shared the Redfield ratio today, and that's because there is absolutely some value in understanding the concept that there is an ideal ratio, and you can at least attempt to be in the neighborhood. Then understand why 100 parts per million nitrate and 0.00 phosphate is not a good thing and will almost certainly result in a variety of bacterial, algae, and coral metabolic health issues. Let's start with the first cause, which is nutrient input. The ratio of nitrate to phosphate of the foods and other additives like coral nutrients added to the tank are likely not in the perfect ratio. I can't make a blanket statement that covers all foods, but in general, I would say that foods that contain terrestrial animals like beef and organ meat, fruits, grains, and vegetables probably have a different phosphate to nitrate ratio than components sourced from the sea or even fresh water. In general, the less it looks like plankton or something that feeds on plankton, the larger the likelihood the ratio is off. This is why I think many people like to feed frozen foods, which are not only the most similar to fish's natural diet, but also somewhat similar in nitrogen to phosphate ratios. Even freshwater foods like mysis are likely closer than beef, wheat flour, corn, or fruits, which can be found in many of the dried pellets or flake foods. It's not that these pellet foods are not nutritious, because that's actually not true. They're incredibly nutrient dense. However, it's possible that they could have a different ratio of phosphorus to nitrate, which will show up over time as an unbalanced level in the tank. Beyond that, there's 101 coral food additives out there, most of which are mystery elixirs with very little information as to what's inside. So there's no way of knowing what impact it would have on nitrate to phosphate ratios. I don't think anyone needs to go scrambling looking for the perfect fish food or coral additives all of a sudden, but next time you're considering changing foods, this is a solid element to consider, and if you do happen to have a severely unbalanced tank, which isn't explainable in any other way, it would be worthwhile to consider the food or nitrogen and phosphate source that you're adding to the tank. The second cause of really high nitrates but low phosphates, or the inverse, is poor testing equipment or procedure. Anytime you have an issue that comes to your attention from testing and doesn't make sense, the test kit should always be suspect. 
Don't believe them blindly and remember these are hobby grade kits, not analytical research grade tools. For phosphate, the HANA phosphate checker is best for mid to high range readings, and the HANA ultra low range phosphorus checker is best for ultra low near zero readings. I don't think anyone's eyes can read the shades of blue involved with phosphate test better than a HANA checker can. I found the nitrate test kits to be pretty mysterious. Many of them have challenges reading the lower ranges, and none of them seem to match each other at higher levels above 30. If you really want to know how good your kit or checker is working, making some standard solutions is probably the best method. Hawk sells some standard solutions for basically any parameter that you could want to test, and be diluted in seawater to make a known value. We did that standards testing on a video a few weeks ago with the phosphate checkers and found them to be surprisingly accurate, but I think it'd be fun to do the same with the various nitrate test kits as well, so let us know if you'd like to see that in an upcoming BRS TV Investigates. The third cause of nutrient unbalance is probably the most common, which is nutrient export methods. Water changes, skimmers, filter socks, and refugiums all likely remove both nitrogen and phosphate in a similar ratio as they were introduced to the tank. However, filter media is which directly remove elements like phosphate or nitrogen sources like ammonia, nitrite, or nitrate will almost certainly end up in a pretty severe unbalance. I think GFO is the most common and notable one. GFO is capable of stripping almost all of the phosphate out of the tank, but will do almost nothing about nitrate. In fact, many organisms that would normally naturally reduce nitrate levels through biological growth are no longer able to do that because there's almost no phosphate. I've seen hundreds of tanks that use GFO and look absolutely pristine because there's zero algae. The GFO works so well it can fool you into believing you have pristine water quality, but in reality the nitrates are sky high and getting higher every day. And then one day the tank takes a turn for the worse. Does that make GFO bad? No, it's an awesome tool which does exactly what it claims, which is maintain ultra low phosphates, which reduces algae growth, and for a lot of reefers, having the tank look pristine in their living rooms with as little work as possible is the number one goal. My only advice is if you do use it, do a couple of larger water changes a year to keep the nitrates down, or consider an approach to reducing nitrogen independently like zeolite. Beyond that, carbon dosing, biopellets, nitrate reactors, and other nitrate-specific solutions might reduce phosphate as well as nitrate, but don't be surprised if they're more efficient at keeping nitrate low than phosphate, and it ends up in a somewhat unbalanced scenario. The fourth cause of unbalance is unintended or unexpected reactions. Dosing saturated lime water or Kalkwasser solution is a good example. Many reefers believe that the high pH of the Kalkwasser solution causes the phosphate to precipitate out and effectively reduces the phosphate levels in the tank, but it's not going to impact nitrate. I don't think anyone has proven this, but it's largely believed to be true. So if you considered nutrient input with fish and coral foods, nutrient export, testing methods, and still not found your unbalanced culprit, I guess I'd start to think outside the tank a bit and look at things like Kalkwasser. The conversation on this concept evolves every day, so I really look forward to reading your experiences and how other reefers have identified the cause and solution for their unbalanced nutrients on this week's Reef to Reef thread. As always, if you enjoy these facts, let us know with a quick thumbs up and subscribe because we release new ones each week. See you next week with another BRS TV 52 FAQ.